What's up guys? Welcome to Thai Talk episode 1 and today we're going to be doing some installation of some parts. This is my bike, it's a Honda Dio AF27 with a 44mm piston kit, We've got 1642 gears, a uh, upgraded CDI, um, got an upgraded coil, transmission stock, carburetor stock, airbox is stock, as you can see I've got Daytona rear shock there, I've resprayed the bike green, I've got some carbon fiber wrap on the skirt panel, the wheels are two-tone metallic gold, I've got some custom made footrests, everything else resprayed black there, um, I've got some mad buttons to complement the mad spray paint job, and uh, here's the parts I'm going to be installing today. It's a throttle with throttle cable, 30mm carburetor, a silver intake manifold, COSO clutch kit, a thousand RPM, contra spring, and an air filter. Right, let's do this. Okay guys, so first of all, you're going to want to remove the side panel, and it's just two Phillips screws, which I'm undoing here. And there's a third bolt, 10mm bolt, that I don't have in at the moment, but I've just drawn an arrow just so you can see exactly where that is, it's just there. And, um, and then once everything is removed, the bolts and the screws, then you should be able to just slide the panel off in a, a swift jerking motion. Wrong! Towards the back of the bike. Um, I haven't actually unscrewed it properly yet, and that's why I'm having troubles. But once you actually pop all of the little clips out, it should easily slide out. And you'll see that just now. Clip it out and off it comes. Now as you can see, you've got really great access to the carburetor, the fuel lines and vacuum lines and all this kind of thing. Which will make everything a lot easier when working on your scooter. Now just to give a bit of a backstory, um, I actually moved out to Thailand around six months ago. I live with my wife there in a suburb of Bangkok and, um, and her brother introduced me to Dio's. He's got a, a ZX Dio uh, and it is it's crazy fast man. It's got a 70cc kit, it's ported, fully ported, really great exhaust and it goes fast man. You know, so I, I picked myself one. Uh, a Dio for around about 150 USD which is standard price for a, a standard Dio um, and since then I've just been learning about how to modify it and get some crazy top speeds I've got uh, some really good people around me to advise me on, um, on how to modify the scooter so hopefully this journey is going to be a really interesting one and we're going to get some incredible speed and acceleration from the Dio so as you can see, um, now I'm removing the airbox, and this is held on with uh, two or three 10 mil bolts and a Phillips uh, Phillips screw, which I previously removed, so that it can be taken off like that. Um, I just have one 10 mil bolt in there, uh, just for making things easier to get on and off. Um, so you just undo that, and then I find after that to get the airbox off of the carburetor you can use a flathead screwdriver um, which you can kind of wedge into where the where the airbox joins onto the carburetor and it pops off super easy all right so next is the carburetor this is just a standard stock do carburetor i'm not exactly sure of the size maybe 19 millimeter not absolutely sure on that so first of all you've got a couple of bolts on the back side of the carburetor um, there's an arrow just pointing to them now um, they're 10 millimeter or possibly 8 millimeter I'm not 100 percent on that I forget exactly um, I would suggest removing any hoses first uh, you'll have a bit of petrol spill out of the hoses um, now obviously I'm replacing this carburetor with a 30 millimeter OKO carburetor. Um, I've come to learn that actually it's probably a little big for the setup, 
but I will probably do something about that in the future. Uh, for now, I'm just going to run it and see how it goes. So as we can see, um, which I mentioned, there will be fuel coming out of the fuel line. Um, it's pouring all over the floor there. Nice. Um, I would suggest having like a microfiber cloth to hand or some kind of little cup that you can catch any fuel that comes out, put it back into your tank or whatever. Um, actually I painted the floor here with some grey floor paint um, a few days prior to this and that just wiped the paint clean off with the with the petrol getting on it. But it's not the end of the world, you know, it's not the end of the world. So next we'll go back to the bolts on the back of the carburetor and just finish off taking those off so that we can remove the carburetor completely and then take the slide out and the carburetor should come completely out at that point. Now to take the slide out all you'll have to do is just unscrew the little cap on the top. Apologies for my arm covering all that action at the moment. It's not that it's not that exciting, I promise. So we'll take the carburetor off and then undo the cap at the top. Now it's off. You'll undo the cap at the top, the slide will come out, and there's your carburetor fully removed. Watch out when you're moving it around um, because petrol can still leak out if you tip it. Ah uh, yeah, and of course, um, the choke, uh, that needs to come out, that's just a couple of Phillips head screws, easy enough, unscrew them, and then it pulls straight out. As you can see, as I mentioned, when you tip the carburetor, you will see a little bit of fuel leaking out of there, so again, having a microfiber cloth or a tray or a cup, whatever, can just help to keep things a bit more clean and tidy. Okay guys, so the choke's out, the next thing that's going to have to come off is the intake manifold. And to get the intake manifold off, we're going to have to remove part of the shroud. This is some 8mm bolts and 10mm for the intake manifold. Now, to stop me rambling on, I've learned just now on YouTube how to speed up the footage. So. Here goes a little bit of sped up footage just to make things move a little bit faster. Okay guys, so we've got the intake manifold off and we've got the spacer off, as you can see, stock DO spacer, stock DO reeds. Now obviously after removing it there's going to be some gasket remnants left, which you can see here. And what I like to do is use a small razor blade or a craft knife blade just to scrape the old gasket off. Um, Unlike what you see me doing here, you might want to put a little bit of uh, cloth or a paper towel or any kind of rag just to stop any small pieces of gasket going into your intake ports because that really is something that we don't need. Now, obviously you can see I'm not doing this right now but in a few seconds it's going to dawn on me the stupidity of what I'm doing and I'm going to say hey 
go and get something to block those ports. Now, as you can see, a little piece of toilet tissue, a paper towel stuffed into the ports works great. And then you can continue to use the, uh, the razor blade or whatever it is you're using just to scrape away the old gasket. Welcome back. As you can see we've got the manifold installed now and I have to say that was a really difficult install. The bolts are just not in very good places at all. But it's done. And next let's take a look at the carburetor. As I said before 30mm OKO carburetor. A little bit big but I think it's going to be okay. It certainly looks nice and shiny and nice and new. So here it is, out of the box. It's a D-slide carburetor, OKO. Comes with all the parts you need. A few extra, a few extra jets just for tuning the carburetor. But first, before I do this, I'm going to need to install the throttle and throttle cable so that I can install the new cable into the carburetor because I found that the old one obviously just didn't fit. So let's get this bit underway. I've got a feeling it's going to be a difficult process. So it's a NCY throttle, the cable, unknown brand. I don't know, but I was promised that it's a really great cable. So first of all, you're going to have to take off a lot of panels to make this work. You're going to have to take off this panel here and uh, the front panel and where your feet rest that's going to have to go the storage box there that you can see and uh, pretty much it's all Phillips head screws and I think no no it's, it's all just Phillips head screws and 10 mil bolts now with the magic of editing it's all gone so you can see here now you can clearly see where the throttle cable, the old one, goes uh, all the way down the handlebar stem there and uh, into where the carburetor lives. 
Now you can see why the old cable wouldn't be sufficient because as you can see the old cable actually splits into two just here. Now obviously one cable goes to the carburetor and one cable goes to the oil tank. Now with the new throttle cable it's only a single cable so it's much better for movement giving smoother throttle response. Now I realised halfway through this that I actually need to purchase one of these plugs. So obviously after removing um, the old throttle cable and the oil tank I'm going to need to remove all of this stuff here um, which will give a much cleaner look by the end of it and of course make it look a bit cooler. So let's see how that looks once it's removed. These are all the parts that were unnecessary and there it is, the plug's in there. This plug cost me a few hundred baht, which is, we're talking three or four, maybe five US dollars, something like that. And it really neatens up the inside of the bike. I'll probably keep these parts just in case one day, who knows, maybe I'll need them in the future. So let's get on and install this cable and throttle. So here they are, NCY throttle, unbranded cable, who knows which one, but it looks cool. I've got a feeling that, again this is going to be a quite difficult install just to get off these grips is going to be hard enough but there's ways around it you can squirt some water down there it'll make it a lot easier. So you can see here where the throttle cable is plumbed in along the stem and the frame of the bike. So what we're going to do is just follow that same that same path by the magic of editing once again here it is installed. Now doesn't that look great? I'm so pleased with this. It's such an improvement visually and I'm sure performance wise. Now we're going to move on to the Koso clutch kit with the 1000 RPM Contra spring. I think this is going to make a huge difference. I do some way wish that I'd gone for the TWH clutch kit because it seems a bit more rough and the clutch is going to bite a lot harder but let's see how this goes once again the magic of editing prevails and it's all installed this is supposed to be a, a install guide of how to do things and I missed out a super important part I mean it's easy enough the rear pulley is a 14 millimeter socket the front pulley is a 17 millimeter socket just pull them out uh, everything goes back together fairly easily. The uh, the contra springs a little bit tricky, but not impossible. It's good. It's good. It's good. Yeah. It's good. Man. It's good. It's good. It's good. Okay, guys. So check it out. Here it is. Everything installed. I cannot explain how happy I am with this. It looks great, it sounds great, and I can't wait to take it out on the road and test it. Okay guys, so check it out. This is it, the DO put back together again. Everything installed, new manifold, carburetor, intake, clutch kit, contra spring, throttle and cable. I'm just so happy about this. I must admit, I'm feeling like I might upgrade the cylinder to a 48 millimeter, but that's something for the future and we'll, uh, we'll see how that goes. There's plenty of shops around here in Thailand that sell all of these parts, so it's not a problem finding parts for a decent price. The only issue I found with the new throttle is that I think I'm going to need to chop a little bit off the end of the handle so that the grip fits a little bit better on there, but it's 10 times smoother than it was before, which really feels nice when accelerating. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Of course, like, comment, share and subscribe to my channel. This is Thai Talk Two Stroke Life. 
See you next time.